And here in our second example, we now have two objects, one still the four kilogram object moving to the right at 10 meters per second before the collision, and the second object, the two kilograms, is now moving to the right at five meters per second, so not, not unlike in the first example, the second object is moving. It's still an inelastic collision, meaning energy is not conserved, and they stick together so that they will both move at the same velocity after the collision. So we write down that momentum initial equals momentum final, and so we can write that m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial equals m1 plus m2, because they stick together, times v final. Remember that the equation for momentum is mass times velocity. All right, so now we, these are, neither one of these are zero, so let's plug in the numbers. Or actually, before we do that, let's just solve for v final. It's always cleaner to solve for the variable algebraically first before we plug in the numbers. So let's divide both sides by m1 plus m2 and turn the equation around. So we have v final is equal to this quantity right here, which is m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial divided by m1 plus m2. So I switched the equation around and divided both sides by m1 plus m2, and I get this. Now I can go ahead and plug in the numbers. Again, anything to the right is positive, anything to the left is negative, although in this case, both are moving to the right, they both have positive velocities. So we have four kilograms times v1 initial, which is 10 meters per second, plus the two kilograms times the five meters per second, and the whole thing divided by the sum of their masses, which is 4 kilograms plus 2 kilograms. So, and what is that equal to? That's 40 plus 10, that's 50 divided by 6. So 50 divided by 6 equals an 8.33 meters per second. 8.33 meters per second. There we go, and that's how we do that one.